Hey everyone, we're going to be taking a look at Farin OS KDE preview build today. And we're going to install it on bare metal. Um, this is the standard welcome screen that comes with Farin, so I don't think this is going to do anything because it's set up for Cinnamon. So I think that's why there's another icon on the desktop, so we'll use that. Let's go next. UK English. Okay, that seems to have got stuck. Is that responding? Yep, we're okay. Okay, tell it to do that. Whilst that's sorting itself out, let's have a quick look. Development, we've got Icon Browser, Education, Mathematics and Science, which is just LibreOffice stuff by the looks of it, yeah. Graphics, we have ooh, Critter, interesting. Don't often see Critter installed, that's welcomed. That's one of my dailies. And Ramina, that's another daily. PIM setting exporter icon is broken. With Vivaldi, Web Browser Manager. Yes, you can unmount that. Multimedia, we've got cheese. I've installed these. The pulse icon's a bit weird there, but I think it does that anyway. We've got VLC. Full LibreOffice. A few settings here, but we've got the um, NVIDIA Rack server, software sources, switch to unstable channel, and Synaptic Package Manager. Very welcome. No sign of Dolphin, so this is our package manager or the console whichever you prefer. Deconf editor, driver manager, FCI text, files, info center, that icon looks broken as well. Install Kubuntu, obviously it's based on Kubuntu. KDE partition manager, console, KSIS guard, KSystem log, login window, NVIDIA X server settings again. Send feedback, software manager, which I believe to be Mint installer, switch to unstable, synaptic, update manager and welcome screen. Under utilities we've got arc, calculator, clocks, disks, docky, files, latte, maps, spectacle, text editor, xpad and your standard session menu items. If we have a quick look in uh, configure desktop, we just have a blurred background and we have the standard plasma background. We'll just stick with the Ferrum background for now. There's another icon missing here under filter, or it's just not rendering properly. It seems very, very faint. I'm sure Ferrum will address that. This has taken a long time to download for some reason. At the top here, the clock and calendar. It's quite nice. It gives us the uh, indicated days with this little mark on the corner quite interesting and notifications built in so that's quite different that would normally be down here but it's now up here not sure if I like it there but it's accessible it's useful I can see out of the box Farron has manipulated this icon here for locking and unlocking the widget panel I were to go lock widgets, yeah, that is the standard icon, but he's done something to it there. Okay. And I did notice under alternatives uh, quite why there's um, Apple logos there, I don't know. I think, hoping that's a bit of irony, but no, not really befitting a, a GNU Linux distribution. I don't like any of these other menus. Application dashboard, never liked it. Application launcher, I think it's too cumbersome. Um, although the search facility is quite good, but this, this is clumsy. No, don't like that. Application is the best one. I'll save these two until we get into the installed system. If we get there, this is taking quite a long time now just to get past this screen. I'm not sure what state the mirrors are in. 
but it is taking a while so I'm going to pause here and come back once it's sorted itself out and as I speak okay so okay so Ferner's OS has sorted itself out now so now asking us for a drive I've already prepped the partitions on the drive I want to use just waiting for it to update itself let's scale this window up a bit uh, what am I going to use I'm going to use SDF and I'm going to use that as my boot partition that one's going to be swap this one's going to be root and this one's going to be home and we'll format that as well as you can see I did run the installer previously so this is technically a reinstall because the first install failed so I'm going back over the top after repartitioning the drive and uh, it's remembered my previous settings so that's okay so it's off formatting the drives now so I'm going to pause this and come back when it's underway okay so we're back it's done the grub update it's now removing extra packages almost at 80% now oh, I see if yes QT okay shouldn't take much longer now I have to say this has taken well over 10 minutes to get this far um, even with the pauses and video to jump to different sections letting it complete as far as it can but let's remove a new big um, as installs go this is quite a lengthy install I'm not quite sure why it could be down to the mirrors themselves um, they did appear to be quite slow compared to other mirrors available on mint or ubuntu based distros where this is a mix it's pulling from two different sources or three different sources technically if you count ferrins as well which i believe are sourceforge based and i don't know if he's um allowed that to be random mirrors or if it chooses the closest to you or not i'm not sure but this has taken a while so far a lot longer than a standard install but we'll see how it goes Let's see libgdk3 is being installed Okay, so 89% DPKG, this should be close to the end now. And we'll see what happens when we reboot into the installed system. So I'm going to pause this here because this is taking too long. And I'll be back on the live system. Okay, so we're back. This is the installed system. As you can see, this is the experimental experience of Ferran OS. Um, there is some pertinent information here about things that are missing and bugs that are present. Um, that's pretty much it on that front. Um, I did notice, like I said in the, the previous segment of the video, for some reason, I've now set this to Deja Vu Sans Mono, which interestingly is the only font present under deja vu but it was actually set to deja vu sans without the mono and that was that is what was causing the problems of this weird incremental space as you type it was adding a space to each letter as you went um, but now i've installed i've set it to this 
and as you can see there's no further problems with that that's now working as expected and you can see the formatting now is correct whereas before this segment here was growing as this progress was going along but now that seems to be corrected that's okay but that's something for Ferran to look at for some reason it was using Deja Vu Sans and that, that font's not installed so this is the installed system again let's have a quick look so it's just the three desktops at the moment or background wallpapers that's all it comes with I want to stick with the Ferran one at the moment this icon is still broken it didn't get repaired on install so the filter icon is missing I uh, did notice I've installed simple screen recorders to do this and MPV as you saw me doing the terminal just then and the icon cache is not updating correctly but I'm sure that will be corrected in future versions so Krita did the, the same installation is present on the installed version so Krita Remina are still president of Vivaldi, Web Browser Manager. PIM settings is still broken. Full feet LibreOffice. Same settings under here, same settings under here. Yeah, all looks good. And the same settings there as well. So, this hasn't changed, this is just the same, only we have different dates now bank holiday notifications uh, the tweaked unlock panel icon here looks like it's broken but that may be by design I'm not sure um, again the default menu was this simple menu and um, in all honesty I absolutely detest it as a menu I don't think it's very functional or useful at all the same with the standard application dashboard not a fan never liked it never will and the same with this launcher I think this launcher is extremely clunky extremely cumbersome and very very poorly designed whereas the uh, application menu itself I think is absolutely perfect it does exactly what it should very quickly more efficiently and the search is very good in there as well but there are as I say, the simple menu, which was the default. I'm not sure why that's the default. I personally wouldn't make that a default. That would be an optional. I think it's absolutely hideous. And that's just personal opinion. And this one, I already know what this is. It's Windows 10 based. And again, personally, why? I can't stand menus like this. I think they're too busy they're in your face look how much screen real estate oh, I mean you can resize it with a right click but so much real estate is taken up by this menu and there shouldn't a menu shouldn't take up that much real estate in my opinion and I don't think it's very useful okay it gives Windows users migrating to Linux or GNU Linux distributions or in this case Ferran OS something familiar or very similar um, personally no it's not for me but there we are that's there and I can see why it's there I think Ferran is targeting Windows users and specifically migrating over to Ferran OS and I think that will help with some of them and again Dolphin has gone and we're We've got Nemo and Software Manager is the Mint Installer. I'm pretty sure it is. There is no Discover to be found on this system. Yeah, it's Mint Install. I thought it was. So there we are. If we have a quick look at the software sources and see if they've defaulted back, I believe they would have done. So before I perform an update, yeah, they have. They've defaulted back to the US. I'm going to use EWO Wise because it's 
a pretty quick mirror, and I think Ubuntu is the fastest mirror here anyway. Yeah, it is. We'll we'll stick with that one and update those. That seems to be a bit quicker, so we run with that one. Once it's updated the cache, we should be good to roll. Well, they do tend to stall out a bit. I'm not quite sure how that's coming from SourceForge. Okay. And the partner repositories are activated. It does seem to be very slow at updating. That's pulling from SourceForge. God knows what mirror that is using. I'm not sure if they're dynamic or fixed, but some of the SourceForge mirrors are extremely slow. A lot of them are coming from SourceForge. So it's a bit of a mixed bag here. I mean, I'm not sure, you know, what's coming from Mint, what's coming from Ferran OS on SourceForge and what's coming from Ubuntu mirrors. But again, it is what it is. So we, we have some default PPAs installed, elementary OS. So obviously something's being borrowed from there. We've got fingerprint, Gambas. The graphics drivers, I noticed it installed the 396 drivers and the kernel modules for that, which is quite useful. I don't know why the sources are enabled. They're normally disabled by default, but they're enabled here. I think that just adds to the uh, complexity of what's happening here. LibreOffice, Noob Labs, not keen on them being in as a PPA. OBS, I suppose that's useful being in there, but I noticed it's not installed by default. Um, it would have been nice to see that in there by default as the PPAs are there. Maybe that's something to consider, Ferran, because, you know, lots of people use OBS. It would be nice to see it installed by default. Peak developers, I'm not sure what that's for or what they do. And Peter Levi, I'm not 100% sure what those PPAs are doing. So not how not sure how unstable that would make Ferran if they were to be removed or if they're required it would be nice to have a bit of info on that to explain why these particular PPAs are being used I think the end user has uh, a reasonable right to understand what is happening in their system and why these particular PPAs have been chosen some of them are very obvious but some of them are not so obvious and for the new user I think that could be quite confusing We've got some additional repositories, so we've got Google, Vivaldi, WineHQ. So that's that. I'm going to use the console here to do an update. And we can see what's happening. Yeah, it's hitting quite a lot of sources there. SourceForge, Launchpad. A lot of translation files coming down, but that's okay. Once that's done, that's done. And there we go. And we've got 16 packages that can be upgraded. So let's have a look at those. Base files, desktop files, Ferran config, Ferran KDE config, unknown. That's interesting. Okay. Yep, Linux headaches, Linux generic 4.15.34.36, upgradable from 35, so it's just a, a minor point release up. Software properties, software properties, oh, I was pulling them in from Tara, okay. Well, that's the Mint side of it, there's the Bionic side of it, and the Ferran side of it. So, let's do that. Yep, yeah, let's pull that in. Let's just resize this a bit so it's easier to see. There we go. And th this is pretty odd. I mean, the speed in between some of these mirrors is interestingly 
conflicting. I mean, it can drop right down to extremely slow, and then some of them are really fast. I mean, that's not particularly Farron OS's fault. It's just the mirrors. But um, it did make for an extremely long installation. All told, with the video pauses in each segment, this whole install took about 15, 20 minutes in total, which is extremely long for an install. And I'm not sure if that's purely down to the mirrors or, or what. But as you can see, even this, I mean, normally on a standard Kubuntu install, this flies past. And I know this is pulling in from Mint and SourceForge as well. So that's probably adding to the delay. As I say, I, I can't be too critical because this is a preview build. And so far, I mean, everything seems to be working. I have noticed, though, it's a little bit heavy. It feels a little bit heavy, and every now and again it spins up my GPU fans for some reason. I'm not sure what process in the background is happening here, but they don't normally spin up on any distro unless I'm rendering or gaming or doing something particularly heavy that requires the GPU. Um, I did notice as well. I'll see if I can pull it again now. I've done an update, but when I first did a... Uh, an update and tried pulling in HTOP, it wasn't found doing it through the CLI. I had to pull it in through the software center. So we'll see what happens. Well, through Synaptic actually. And that was quite odd as well because HTOP had a Debian icon next to it. So we'll see. Obviously this is gonna go off now and rebuild the image, so I'll have to wait for that. Let's have a quick look at the welcome screen. Minimise that. So we have the Mint Software Center, Snap and Flat Packs. I believe that just opens up Vivaldi and takes you to the websites. So let's have a look at the introduction. Obviously all this is going to have to be changed as this is primarily a placeholder. I'm not keen on this default theme because it makes things very awkward to resize without using a key combination to grab. And you can see the obvious relationship to Windows 10 here. So, yeah, so we've got Ubuntu, Mint, obviously not Cinnamon anymore, it's KDE. So this is obviously needing an update. Yeah. But, uh, you know, all the information you require is in here. A lot of welcome screens these days have become quite useful. And more, more than just the information about the distro, you know, some of them assist with installing software, default settings, things like that. You can toggle it on and off to show at startup if you wish. Still waiting for this. That's taken a little while. Not quite sure what the delay is there. There we are, it is what it is. So we've got the panel lock there. That's been manipulated by the looks of things. So if we lock that. Yeah, that's the panel lock. That's okay. Let's change the height. Let's see how they scale. Yeah. To be expected. Um, as I say, they, these I find this a little bit odd, but there we are. That is what it is. If we add widgets and have a look in this panel. Yeah, there's a lot of icons missing in here as well. A lot of icons missing. Obviously those Apple logos are the menu items or the menu alternatives. Yeah, there's a lot of missing application icons in here or widget icons. Not quite sure why, but I've noticed there seems to be um, an issue with the icon caching in general on this particular build. 
I'm sure Ferran will address that. This is taking an absolute age. And to be fair, I'm screencasting as well. I'm recording at the same time, so I don't expect it to be too light on resources. I'm expecting about 1.6, 1 1.8 gig, something around there, just under 2 gig whilst I'm doing this. 99%. Hmm, a couple of symlinks have failed here. We're saying the file, the file exists, something hidden is skipped, the file exists, directory is being skipped, and the file exists, and skipping that one as well. I think this has been configured to use as many cores as possible because my CPU is, fan has just spun up whilst it's doing this. Or there is some background process that is being rather aggressive with the CPU. But overall, I think this is going to be quite a welcome change for a lot of people running Ferrarian OS as it is now. Um, Different paradigm than the Cinnamon desktop, but Plasma's getting better and better each day. And I mean, KDE Neon on my system probably sits around 500 megabytes at the desktop from Cold Boot, which is much, much better than it used to be. Um, they're really, really going to town on trimming it down and working on the resource usage on it. And um, hopefully Ferran OS can benefit from that. It would be nice to see if he can get away from the Mint base completely with this. And not have to rely on mixing too many repositories together from different bases. And I understand that, you know, certain tools and certain situations required it previously with Cinnamon, especially the theming side of it. Um, but now he's got KDE. That's a whole nother, a whole nother game, especially with the theming side of things. I think KDE themes are a lot more complex than Cinnamon themes and not as straightforward. Let's see what we've got. Breeze and Breeze Dark. Actually, let's change that. I prefer Breeze Dark. If it's going to. Yep. That's okay. Breeze Dark. We've got Nylum in there. Or Nilium. I actually don't like any of those. I'm quite happy with DMZ. And colors. Yep. Standard stuff. Noto Sans. Font management icons is breeze dark, that's fine. Application style, I'm not going to change this because I'm aware that this could balk the system under the GTK. Changing anything here other than Ferran will probably break it. So I'm going to leave that as is. As I say, this is a development snapshot basically, so we're just having a quick look. It's all the standard KDE stuff in here. There's nothing particularly outstanding here. It's just, you know. Again, some of these icons look a bit funky, but that's just down to the theme. Nothing to do with uh, Freyan OS itself. And that's done. Right, okay. So there we are. That's KDE, uh, Freyan OS KDE preview on bare metal. It's quite an interesting build, and um, I'll be keeping an eye on this. I'd be interesting to see where we can get to. In fact, before we go, let's have a bearing in mind I am 
recording as well at the same time, so. So, as, when I did this from, yeah, see, it's got a Debian icon, that's pretty strange. Let's install HTOP and have a look. And I'm not going to be critical about this, I'm recording at the same time, so I'm not expecting it to be anywhere near what it should be had I not been recording. But I just want to get a handle on, you know, what we're looking at. Yeah, 1.9, I expected that. Obviously the recording's hitting the calls a little bit. What have we got going? Yeah, screen recorder is doing a lot there. Ferran Latte launch is, well, that's interesting. Why are you still trying to do stuff? Okay. Most of it's set up with a you know screen recorder, as you can see, is doing most of the damage here. 1.7, that's not too bad, I suppose, considering what it's doing. 98 tasks, 207 threads, switching between 3 and 4 running. Load average is quite high. I don't believe that to be all simple screen recorder, because I'm not using a very heavy profile on it there. So there are, there's clearly some optimization that can be done here. I'm going to have another look once I stop recording. I'm going to have another look and see what that drops down to. But there, there we have it. That's Ferrin OS KDE Developer Preview. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one. Good job, Ferrin. Keep it going.